They challenged how things were done inside the Navy and outside the Navy and really opened the door for generations of women pilots who followed. It wasn't so long ago that women were forbidden to serve as aviators in the U.S. Navy. The story of how six pioneers broke that glass ceiling is told by journalist Beverly Weintraub in her new book, Wings of Gold. Women have been serving in the Navy since 1908. In the Bureau of Aeronautics during World War I, there were 12,000 women, not necessarily pilots, but doing all sorts of other jobs during World War II. They were air traffic controllers, they were airplane mechanics, they were airborne navigators, they taught men how to navigate and how to fly. Anecdotally, some who had pilot's license may have unofficially done some flying. The Army had 1,074 women who flew for them during the war. The Women's Air Force Service pilots were called the WASP. It's almost laughable how women in the service were viewed. Almost. This is from an internal Armed Forces news show during the 40s. But even before they get a chance to take the polish off their nails, it's out onto a dusty Texas drill field with them. Right away, the Air Force wants to get a little muscle on those pretty arms. Despite outright sexism and not being allowed to fly in combat, women pilots logged some serious miles during the war. And they flew something like 60 million miles between 1942 and 1944. And then the men started coming home and they were sent packing with a thank you very much. After 1948, when these women volunteer auxiliaries were sort of normalized into the military, in the Navy at least, it was made very clear that women were not to fly. And for decades, women didn't fly for the Navy, until 1972. As the Vietnam War was winding down, society was seeing tremendous upheavals, there was a sexual revolution, women were demanding equal treatment. Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, who became the youngest chief of naval operations in history, said, we have a morale problem, we have a personnel crisis, they needed people and they needed the most skilled people they could find. The answer? It seems obvious today, but back then, it was controversial. Let women fly. So they went to um, officers and officers' trainees, found four women who could qualify, found four more civilians, and one of each group dropped out. So the inaugural group of these female naval aviators were six, these six women. who persisted in their careers far longer than any men expected them to. They overcame obstacles, logged a huge litany of firsts. That inaugural group included Captain Rosemary Bryant Mariner. She was the first woman to command an aviation squadron. She was the first woman to fly a Navy tactical jet when women technically weren't allowed to fly jets. The other members of that cohort were Lieutenant Commander Barbara Allen Rainey, Captain Jane Skiles O'Day, Captain Joe Ellen Drag Osland, Pilot Anna Maria Scott, and Captain Judith Neufer, seen here in a Navy publicity video. We can fly the plane and, and we are able to cope with, with the, the pressures and the, the rigorous uh, training that, that we're involved in. As these pioneers can attest, becoming a Navy pilot is no easy feat. Military flight training is extremely tough, extremely regimented. You're graded on everything you do from the minute you step out of the ready room, the entire flight, until you land and you, tie, you secure the aircraft. Everything is being watched, everything is being graded. And they're constantly being tested because they have to be at the peak proficiency at all times because, you know, lives are at stake. This is, this is dangerous work. The six women proved that they could do anything their male counterparts could do. Many women have followed in their footsteps, though as Weintraub notes, there are still challenges. There is still a strain that's um, holding to traditional gender roles. Sexual assault and harassment is a persistent problem. And gender discrimination isn't the only obstacle some women face. As challenging as it's been for women, of course, um, it's been more so for women of color. There have been some milestones um, in aviation, various branches of the military 
just very recently, a woman named LaShonda Holmes, who's the first African-American female helicopter pilot in the Coast Guard, began her career there in 2010. She was pretty much the only female helicopter pilot in the Coast Guard for quite some time. The first African-American female Navy fighter pilot, Madeline Swiegel, got her wings last year. There is progress and, you know, determined women who are making the careers they want, but it is difficult and it, it's challenging. This is Inside Edition Digital.